Hello, my name is Keaton Adams. I'm an advisory data engineer with Pivotal. In this video, we will discuss the platform extension framework, which is used to access external data to facilitate in database data analytics. This presentation and demo are using Pivotal Greenplum 5.21.0. Please consult the Greenplum documentation for the specific technical features of PXF that apply to the version of Greenplum that you have installed in your environment. In this presentation, we will cover topics such as how to initialize and configure the PXF service, how to access data in the cloud, how to access data in SQL databases and Hadoop, and how to use external data in a partition table. Pivotal Greenplum is a product that was launched in 2005, which has over 14 years of development effort behind it. As of now, there has been over 1,000 person years of research and development invested in the product as Greenplum continues to evolve and advance as the leading open source analytical database platform. A real strength of this massively parallel processing database is the ability to take analytics to where the data lives. Greenplum supports a number of analytic functions and languages that allow a data analyst to ask real world questions on massive data sets, receiving answers in record time. Advanced analytic support includes open source libraries such as Madlib for machine learning and graph analysis, and PostGIS for geospatial analysis. In the current enterprise landscape, data lives in different systems. Different teams work on different data stores. Some teams might use Hadoop, other teams might use relational databases, while even others explore cloud storage options. Enterprises have diverse data, Data comes in different formats and with different structures. All of the sources and their data formats listed here are natively supported by Greenplum through PXF. Let's have a look at the steps to initialize and configure PXF. The PXF architecture consists of two parts, the PXF extension and the PXF agent that communicates via REST APIs. The extension is written in C and is a part of the segment process loaded as a shared library. The agent is a Java web application deployed in Apache Tomcat. The Greenplum database administrator will configure at least one server definition for each external data store that they will allow Greenplum database users to access and will publish the available server names as appropriate. PXF is a Java service it requires a Java 1.8 installation on each Greenplum database host. If this version of Java is already installed, you need not perform this step. Install Java on the master, standby master, and on each Greenplum database segment host, then configure the Java environment on each host. The PXF service instance must be initialized on the Greenplum cluster. This one-time initialization process creates the PXF service web application and generates PXF configuration files and templates. The PXF service runs only on the segment hosts. However, the PXF cluster init command also creates the PXF user configuration directories on the Greenplum database master and on the standby master hosts. During initialization, PXF creates the PXF conf directory if necessary and then populates it with subdirectories and template files. To access an external data store, provide the server location along with client access credentials and other external data store specific properties. The information that you provide in a server configuration is connector specific. You will configure a server definition for each external data store that Greenplum database users need to access. For example, if you require access to two Hadoop clusters, you will create a PXF Hadoop server configuration for each. If you require access to an Oracle or a Postgres database, you will create one or more PXF JDBC connector configurations for each database. PXF provides a template configuration file for each connector type. These server template configuration files are located in the pxfconf slash templates directory after you initialize pxf. The pxf extension must be enabled in each database 
in which you plan to use the framework to access external data. You must have Greenplum Database Administrator privileges to create an extension. To read external data with PXF, all non-super user roles must specifically be granted select permission to the PXF protocol. Likewise, to write external data with PXF, all non-super user roles must specifically be granted insert permission on the PXF protocol. PXF accesses Hadoop services on behalf of Greenplum database and users. By default, PXF tries to access data source services such as HDFS, Hive, and HBase using the identity of the Greenplum database user account that logs into Greenplum database and performs an operation using a PXF connector profile. The Greenplum administrator must explicitly configure each Hadoop data source to allow the PXF process owner, usually GP admin, to act as a proxy for impersonating users or groups. With PXF user impersonation enabled, you must configure the Hadoop core site XML configuration file to permit user impersonation for PXF. Set the property hadoop.proxyuser.gpadmin.groups to specify the list of HDFS groups that PXF can impersonate. You should limit this list to only those groups that require access to HDFS data from PXF. Set the property hadoop.proxyuser.gpadmin.hosts to specify the list of PXF host names from which proxy requests are permitted. Now that PXF is initialized and configured, let's have a look at accessing data in the cloud. With PXF, it is possible to store data to be analyzed outside of Greenplum. The storage can scale to petabyte size, which can be used to read from and write to datasets processed by the database. The PXF connector supports all popular public cloud storage options, such as Microsoft Azure, Amazon S3, and Google Cloud Storage. Greenplum is optimized to run at production scale in the cloud. Cloud-based applications can land data in S3, which can be brought in and used for reporting or data analytics on demand. Results of queries and data science activities can be written back to external storage, such as Amazon S3, in massively parallel fashion. To access data in an object store, you must provide a server location and client credentials. As a part of the external table definition, when you configure a PXF object store connector, add at least one named PXF server configuration for the connector. In this example, a set of data files located in an Amazon S3 bucket are read in parallel when a user executes a query against the external table defined in the Greenplum database. The PXF connectors to Azure, Google Cloud Storage, Minio, and S3 expose the following profiles to read, and in many cases write, these supported data formats. Provide the profile name when you specify the PXF protocol on a create external table command to create a Greenplum database external table that references a file or directory in the specific object store. With Amazon Elastic MapReduce, you can provision one, hundreds, or thousands of compute instances to process data at any scale. Using the PXF Hadoop connector, it is possible to access data stored in HDFS in an Amazon EMR cluster. Data can be pre-processed using traditional Hadoop and Spark jobs, with the merge results loaded into Greenplum for further analysis and long-term storage. Data in an external table can be queried directly, joined with internal tables, or read into internal tables for repetitive query processing. It is possible to create an internal table like an external table already defined in the database. Provide the storage options and distribution strategy when creating the internal table. Data is copied in massively parallel fashion from the external table to the internal table in the database cluster. Let's review how to access data in SQL databases with the JDBC connector. Some of your data may already reside in an external SQL database. PXF provides access to this data via the PXF JDBC connector. The JDBC connector is a JDBC client. It can read data from 
and write data to SQL databases including MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, Hive, and Apache Ignite. The PXF JDBC connector supports a single profile named JDBC. You can both read data from and write data to an external SQL database table with this profile. To access data in a remote SQL database, create a readable or writable Greenplum database external table that references the remote database table. The Greenplum database external table and the remote database table or query result must have the same definition. The column names and data types must match. It is possible to write data out of Greenplum back to a table in a SQL database using the insert operator. When the JDBC driver of the external SQL database supports it, batching of insert operations may significantly increase performance. Write batching is enabled by default, and the default batch size is 100 rows. The PXF JDBC connector can further increase write performance by processing insert operations in multiple threads when threading is supported by the JDBC driver of the external SQL database. The PXF JDBC connector provides the option to specify a statically defined query to run against a remote SQL database. The Greenplum Database Administrator defines a query and provides the users with the query name to use when creating an external table. Instead of a table name, specify the query name in the Create External Table Location clause to instruct the PXF JDBC connector to run the static query in the remote SQL database. PXF supports name queries only with readable external tables. A unique Greenplum database readable external table is created for each query that is to be run against the remote database. The names and types of the external table columns must exactly match the names, types, and order of the columns returned by the query result. If the query returns the results of an aggregation or other function, be sure to use the as qualifier to specify a specific column name. In this example, a query against a Postgres database is stored in a file called orderItemQuery.sql, which is located in the pxfconf server's Postgres DB directory. The external table definition maps to the query by using the file name and the server name in the location clause. When a user executes a query in Greenplum against the external table, the SQL file is passed to the remote database for processing which can also include additional filter criteria provided by the user in the SQL query running Greenplum against the external table. PXF supports filter pushdown in Hive, HBase, and the JDBC connector. When filter pushdown is enabled, the constraints from the WHERE clause of a select query can be extracted and passed to the external data source for filtering. This process can greatly improve query performance and can also reduce the amount of data that is transferred back to Greenplum from the data source. In this example, a select is run against customer orders query. That is a named query, which is accessed through an external table definition. The select statement adds a filter condition, returning rows where the order ID is greater than the value of 2010. The Greenplum explain plan shows that the external scan on the Postgres database table will be passed the filter criteria on the order ID column. The Postgres log file shows that when the query was passed in for processing, the filter criteria on order ID was pushed down to the database, allowing the filter operation to happen within Postgres instead of within Greenplum. The PXF JDBC connector supports simultaneous read access from PXF instances running on multiple segment hosts to an external SQL table. This feature is referred to as partitioning. Read partitioning is not enabled by default. To enable read partitioning, set the partition by, range, and interval custom options when the PXF external table is created. When partitioning is enabled, the PXF JDBC connector splits a select query into a set of smaller queries each of which is called a fragment. 
The JDBC connector automatically adds extra query constraints, or where expressions, to each fragment to guarantee that every row of data is retrieved from the external database exactly once. In this example, an external table in Greenplum is defined against a table in a Postgres database. As a part of the table definition, partition by, range, and interval clauses are given to run the underlying query in parallel by date range. When a user executes a Greenplum query against the external table, the JDBC connector will automatically create multiple SQL selects against the target database to run the query in parallel, also guaranteeing that only unique data is returned in the result set. In this example, the Postgres log shows the four individual transactions and the queries that the JDBC connector creates in order to query the underlying table in parallel. Now let's have a look at how Greenplum can access data in Hadoop through PXF. PXF is compatible with Cloudera, Hortonworks Data Platform, MapR, and generic Apache Hadoop distributions. PXF is installed with HDFS, Hive, and HBase connectors. You use these connectors to access varied formats of data from these Hadoop distributions. The HDFS connector allows PXF to read data stored in Hadoop HDFS in four different formats. Simple text format with field delimiters, JSON, and optimized storage formats such as Parquet, Avro, and ORC. The PXF Hive connector allows users to query data managed by Hive. It supports simple formats such as text and JSON, as well as optimized file types such as ORC and Parquet. When reading from a Hive table, PXF does not dispatch the query directly to the Hive execution engine, but instead reads and processes the underlying files directly. This allows PXF to avoid the overhead of the Hive query execution engine since query processing is happening in Greenplum and we only need to supply the data to it. To read and write data with Hadoop, create external tables to access the various file groups and data sources. In this example, a set of files that contain customer data in HDFS is read through a SQL select in Greenplum. With the default setting of user impersonation equal to true, ensure that you have granted read permissions and write permissions where appropriate to the Hadoop files and directories that will be accessed as external tables by each Greenplum database user. In this last section, we will review using internal and external data in a Greenplum partitioned table. Table partitioning enables supporting very large tables, such as fact tables, by logically dividing them into smaller, more manageable pieces. Partition tables can improve query performance by allowing the Greenplum database query optimizer to scan only the data needed to satisfy a given query, instead of scanning all the contents of a large table. External table partitions are read-only. Commands that attempt to delete or modify data in an external table partition will return an error. In this example, the sales table is made up of partitions of both internal and external types. The various external partitions can point to one or more data sources. The September 2019 partition is an internal append optimized table. The March 2019 partition points to a Hive table located in a Hadoop cluster. The June 2019 partition points to a set of Parquet files located in Amazon S3. The January 2019 partition references a table in a Postgres database. When a query is issued against the parent table, Greenplum will automatically search for data across the partitions, retrieving rows of information from the various internal and external data sources that match the filter criteria. Using Greenplum PXF with table partitioning, applications and end users have the power of SQL analytics at their disposal without having to know the physical location of the data that they are interested in. In this example, the query retrieves data from table partitions that use internal storage, Amazon S3, Hive, and Postgres in massively parallel fashion to retrieve the dataset. And now for a demo of PXF.
So in this first demo, we will initialize and configure PXF. I'm using the Amazon environment for that. I have um, a few different EC2 instances running. They make up basically my Greenplum cluster, my Hadoop cluster, and my Postgres instance uh, for the Postgres database um, connection demo that we're doing. So this is where everything's running. And let's have a look here at my Greenplum environment. So the first thing to do is make sure that uh, Java is installed and configured properly. So Okay, so we're going to basically make sure that yes, we have the correct Java version installed and ready to go. And then if I echo home, Java, echo Java home, I should have the Java home environment set properly on all of the nodes in the cluster, which I do. So I just actually upgraded this database um, from 5.20.1 to Greenplum 5.21.0. And anytime you initialize a new cluster or you upgrade a cluster, if you go to start PXF, um, basically it's going to say that it can't because it needs to be initialized. So in this instance, because I did do the upgrade of uh, the minor point release, before I can start um, PXF as a service, I'm going to go ahead and do an init. Now, if you already have configuration files and everything deployed, the init does not overwrite them. You don't lose your settings. It just basically republishes or re reinitializes the core set of files, configuration files and such for the actual PSF process across all the nodes in the cluster. So I'll go ahead and issue an init. All right, so that was successful. And then we'll go ahead and start the PXF service. And let's see, that's going to come up here in just a second. All right. And then uh, we will go ahead and check the status. And it's up and running. So if I have a look in my already predefined PXF conf directory and I look under here, I have different uh, subdirectories with information. Servers is where I've all of my servers defined. So we'll clear this. So you'll notice I have uh, servers, um, a directory for each server type, whether it's the Hadoop cluster, or it's my Oracle database, my Postgres database, whatever it may be. I have a connector for Amazon S3 defined. If I look at one of them, like for HDP, then you'll see I have a specific set of configuration files that I need to, in this case, bring down from the Hadoop cluster. So basically the Hadoop client knows how to connect and gain access to uh, everything from HDFS to Hive. There are templates. So if we look at the templates directory, um, this is where you can get started configuring, say, a um, Hadoop cluster configuration from scratch, or JDBC as a connection type, S3 as a connection type. You have these templates. And in addition to the configuration files in the servers directory, if you look at one other directory, the, the lib directory, you may also have to have some jar files um, basically set up on the master and then pushed out everywhere. Like I have here with this Postgres JDBC jar file to do the JDBC database connections. So once everything is set up, I've initialized, I have my configuration files. I can basically issue a uh, GP home, bin, PXF, and then do a cluster sync. And all the configuration files I had set on the master are pushed out to all of the other nodes in the cluster. Now I'm ready to go ahead and um, start connecting to external data sources and do what I need to do to read and write data to the various uh, 
S3 buckets and Hadoop and the Postgres database I have set up for this demo. Okay, in this next example, let's look at how we read and write data uh, from a cloud storage bucket such as Amazon S3. So I have a, a file here for, with a table definition. And if you have a look, it's two types. It's a writable external table and then uh, one that's basically for read. And this is going to write to my Amazon bucket I have defined. It's going to write a um, table of data out to a file I'm going to call, um, or a directory actually called sales.parquet. This is using the S3 profile and my actual private and public keys and what region and everything that um, basically the connection information for how um, I can read and write to this S3 bucket. That's, that's defined in the directory Amazon S3, uh, which we saw in the first video where the servers are defined. And then this is a custom format for um, exporting data. And then of course, this is the import for reading it back uh, into my database. If I look in my Amazon environment and I look in my S3 bucket uh, setup, I have different S3 buckets and then one in particular is right now empty so I have nothing here but we'll fix that. So we'll go ahead and um, let's create this setup. All right, we created my tables. Then we'll go to the database. All right, so I have two tables. I have sales, which is the sales table that's, that's, that contains my data that's an internal table. And then I have my two tables for S3. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and write out the sales data. So now this is going to create a set of parquet files under the bucket name I specified. And um, when I'm done, we should be able to go over to the S3 console and see what it ended, it ended up creating. Okay, so we inserted uh, 24 million rows uh, into an S3 bucket. So let's refresh this and see what we have. So now here's my sales.parquet uh, folder. If I dive into this, you'll see multiple files because um, it's a parallel write. So multiple database segments in uh, Greenplum are actually writing out this data in uh, the pieces and parts, which, are, which is great because then on the read, we can read it in a parallel fashion as well. So we have this set up and this is ready to go. If I come back over here to my terminal window, and let's see, let's have a look at the uh, sales S3 external table. So this is an external table, again, pointing to my uh, S3 bucket, pointing to the sales.parquet uh, folder that's underneath there. And then if I say select from and say limit five, then this is actually going out and directly reading the data from the S3 bucket, like it was any other table in the database. So this is an example of reading, writing, reading and writing data in parallel um, to, you know, in my example, I used Amazon for S3. This would work just as easily and just as well in Azure or on Google, uh, on the Google compute platform, GCP. We have these connectors that work um, with any of these cloud environments and they work just as well and, and just as easily. So in this demo, we'll read and write uh, data to a SQL database. In this case, it's a Postgres database that I have up and running. And let's see, if I look at the sales table, it's a table in my database and I'll select some data from it. So this is here. Now I'm going to go back over to the Greenplum environment. 
and we'll have a look at this file. And in this case, I'm going to create an external table called sales underscore PG. It's uh, the sales table in the public schema in my Postgres database. I'm using the JDBC driver to connect to it. And then the server definition, its host name, user credentials and things uh, are located in the Postgres DB server directory. So we'll go ahead and uh, create this. All right, there we go. And let's go into the database. And we'll look at the sales PG table. Okay, this is an external table, again, pointing to uh, using PXF to point to the sales table in my Postgres database. And then on this side, if I select from that external table, boom, there. So I've read the data out of the Postgres data, Postgres uh, database out of the sales table into my sales PG external table in Greenplum. So once you get the basic configuration up and running, pointing to tables and reading data out of it is a very straightforward process. So another thing we can do is let's have a look at Postgres text. So in this example, I'm going to um, basically insert data. So you can use the insert statement to insert data from Greenplum into a SQL database. And we'll set this up now. All right, so we created the external tables. And then, let's see, items insert, there we go. So I have these uh, four insert statements that will insert data into the uh, items table. And let's come over here and make sure my table's empty. Okay, so my items table has no data. And let's see, then we're gonna run this insert statement. and I inserted four rows. So if I go into my Greenplum database and I look at items PG, this is the readable version of that table. And then I'm gonna select star, select items PG. There's my four rows. If I go over to my Postgres database, There's my four rows of data. So that's inserting um, information from Greenplum back into a SQL database. And then the last thing to show tied to the JDBC driver is the ability to run a named query. So we'll have a look at that. So in my PXF conf servers directory under Postgres, I have the configuration file for my JDBC driver, and I have a, a couple of query files in here. So let's have a look at Q1. So this is a static query that pulls sales information from the sales table, and then it's filtering on a date range and a sale amount, and by default ordering the output by sale date and sale amount. So I have that, and then let's see, get back to the demo directory. And if I look at sales, Postgres query, now I'm gonna create an external table called sales query. And its location using PXF is of type query. And then this is the file name, sales uh, Q1 query. That's going to match what was here in my PostgresDB directory. 
And then of course it knows which directory because the server clause says look in Postgres DB. So we will go ahead and create uh, this external table. All right, I'll clear the screen. And then we'll go to the database and look at sales query. All right, here's my definition. PXF, going to execute the sales Q1 query in my Postgres database when I execute the query. So let's say, let's do select star from sales query. And then we, I'm going to add some additional filter criteria where sales ID, say between 2,000 and 3,000, and then I'll limit the output to five rows. So Greenplum executed this query on the Postgres database, and then it actually ran that query and then applied an additional filter criteria and then returned back the five rows. So as you can see, in certain circumstances, it might be quite beneficial to have a named query if you have something that's very repetitive coming out of, say, another database, a reporting database that's landing data there. You're always picking up the same type of information, maybe joined on several tables. Um, this is the ability to not necessarily have to create new objects, say, in your Oracle or Postgres database. You know, you, you wouldn't create a, you, maybe you don't have the ability to create a view but you need this complex query to, to query from every, every time, every day, maybe for a report you're running in Greenplum, you have the ability to basically pre-build these queries. And when you're running them on the target database, in my case, Postgres, uh, you're, you're running the query with all the filtering, the ordering, the, you know, the joining is happening in that database. And then the only thing that Greenplum has to do is bring back the result set. So this is gonna be a very powerful way to push down a lot of um, query running and filtering operations at the source instead of Greenplum having to do all of this work. So that's interacting with JDBC databases, the JDBC connector, both reading and writing data as well as running a named query. Okay, so in this last demo, we're going to basically just read data from a hive table in Hadoop. All of these connectors work uh, very in, in a similar manner with external table definitions. And here's one last one that just shows uh, reading data out of a, a hive table. So I have my uh, Hadoop cluster up and running. And uh, let's see, let's let's kick off hive. And we'll have a quick look and see what's uh, here in, in the hive environment. So we'll show tables. And then I have a few different test tables. And then I'll select from my sales March table and bring back a sample set. Okay, so here's my table defined in Hive with my sample data set in my Hadoop environment. Then we'll move back over to Greenplum. And I have an external table called Sales Hive that I have defined, which matches the definition of the Hive table uh, here in the, the Hadoop environment. And I'm going to say location PXF. It's called the sales March table. And I'm using the Hive profile, one of the included profiles in PXF. And let's see, format is custom, and it's actually using my default server, so I don't have to specify that here. And we'll create this table. All right, and then if I go into the database and I have a look at the Hive table, there's this definition, which means at this point, now I should be able to select and say limit five again. And then this is going to go off and read from my Hadoop cluster and pull back five rows of data from this table. So that's basically how you read and write data out of all of the currently available data sources as examples. So we had Amazon S3 as our cloud store 
We can read and write data to formats such as Parquet. We have um, relational data or basically SQL database access to databases like MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, um, so on and so forth. You can, of course, read from tables, insert into tables using the insert statement, and then use features such as named query. When you're reading data, you have the ability to include partition clauses to do those reads in parallel. And of course, with Hadoop, there's a number of ways to read and write data in and out of Hadoop um, from Hive, HDFS, HBase. All of those are supported across all of the major um, Hadoop distributions, including the more generic uh, open source Apache Hadoop. So hopefully this was a helpful uh, session and demo. And now you have a better understanding how the platform extension framework allows you to really bring in vast amounts of data from external data sources you have in your organization and use them all centrally in Greenplum for really advanced in database analytics, data science, and reporting purposes. Thanks for watching.